Hi friends and welcome to another fun video. Today we will create a void that has the power to cut through anything, a super void. Cutting beams and columns isn't always a straightforward and easy task. With the standard model in place, it won't suffice. That's why I'm here to demonstrate how to craft a face-based super void capable of cutting through anything it encounters. Well, almost. We start a new family, metric generic face-based model. This means that the family requires a surface or a face to be placed upon. Without the essential face or surface, the family won't function. We move into the 3D view, we make this a void so it's easier for us to see the geometry we are drawing. We then go to the reference level, plan level and establish reference planes for our rectangular void. We go to the front view, drawing up the reference planes for our thickness and place out the dimensions. We check the sign EQ. The EQ sign, since we want the geometry to expand in equal distance from one another around a center line. We do the same for our thickness. And we proceed by setting up our parameters. As we set up our parameters, make sure to designate them as instance parameters, since very often every cut is unique. If you find yourself dealing with many similar cuts in your geometry, then you might consider using type parameters. We have adding our parameters for the rectangular. Now we connect the parameters we created with the dimension lines, which again is connected to the reference planes. That's finished. We we proceed by creating the void geometry. This will be an extrusion rectangular and we align them to the reference planes. Like that, we go to uh, our front view and align them to the reference planes there. So the thickness will be parametric. Looks good. We check the box cut with voids when loaded to make sure this family actually cut the geometry as intended. We save it as a rectangular void. We save it on the desktop, just simple. We load it into the project to see how this works. We select the cut command under the modify tab choose the object to be cut and then select our rectangular void to cut the selected object and it works. We change the length and we change the width. Okay, so our uh, rectangular void uh, works. But we don't want just a rectangular void. We want the option to create a circular hole as, as well, transforming this family into a super void. This will be a bit more complex because our goal is to switch between the rectangular void and the circular void seamlessly. We introduce the switch parameter, which are a yes-no parameter that act as a switch between the rectangular void and the circular void. The switch will be the most important end user parameter. So we place it at the top of the hierarchy within our group dimensions. I can see that the thickness is a type parameter. We change this to the instance parameter. We leave the parameter window and draw up our geometry for our void circular. We add an annotation, connect the annotation with a parameter. That will be the diameter. We go to the front view and align it to the thickness. Same with our rectangular void. And as you can see, we have both now a rectangular and a circular void. We continue creating the parameters. This would be a yes-no visibility parameter for both circle and another one for the rectangle. We place the, these uh, parameters in the other category as they will function as a background parameters locked and calculated and not be edited by the end user. The idea is to toggle these parameters on and off 
with the, the switch parameter. When the switch parameter is turned on, the circle visibility parameter is unchecked and the rectangular parameter is checked. When the switch parameter is turned off, the circle visibility parameter is checked on and the, uh, the rectangular parameter is turned off. In essence, setting one parameter to no triggers the other to be set to yes, and this can be achieved using the NOT formula. Since the visibility for the voids doesn't switch on and off as intended, when loaded into the main project, we need to be a bit clever about it. I will explain as we go along. We will add the same parameters for the width and length of the rectangle and the diameter for our circle. Our aim is to ensure that when the circle yes no parameter is turned on, the dimensions for the rectangular void are close to zero, making it so small that it will be invisible and making the circle visible and vice versa when the circle is turned off. We accomplish this by employing the if statement, which I have elaborated on in a previous video. So let's add an if statement for the diameter visibility for our circle. If the rectangular visibility is checked, then the return value for diameter V will be one millimeters. If rectangular visibility is unchecked, then the return value for the diameter V will be the diameter value which the end user can modify. We will test it and as we can see, when we check and uncheck the yes no parameter for the switch, the return value for the diameter V will toggle between 1 mm and 840 mm. We copy the if statement and do the same for the rectangular length and width parameters. We just change some of the values inside of the if statements so it will correspond with the width v parameter. We proceed and update the dimension line parameter connection to our newly created parameters which contain the if statements and the yes no visibility parameter. We proceed to do some flexing. We are changing the switch on and off. And as you can see, the circular gets big and the rectangular gets big when it's turned on and off, just as intended. We go and purge our family. We save it as a super void because that is what it is now. We then go and load it into the main project and place it out. We delete our old void and we start cutting. We switch between the rectangular and the circular. Man, this really gives me goosebumps when everything works perfectly after setting up some advanced formulas in the family environment. We go to the project browser and locate the, our super void. We delete the old rectangular. We place out some super voids on our beam. One there and one on the column and one on the other column. You see, this is a face based family, so it needs a face to be attached to. And we start cutting. The cut through the geometry flawlessly. And that concludes this tutorial. Don't forget to show your support by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing for more awesome content.